Thank you so much for having me here today. Um, my name is Lisa O'Brien, and I'm a postdoctoral research fellow in the Department of Psychological Sciences at Rice University. Um, and while I'm currently based in psychology, my background is in um, behavioral ecology and collective animal behavior, and it's shaped my perspective on the current work that I'm conducting with humans. And so I'm going to be talking today about um, approaching studies of collective intelligence in human teams from the perspective of animal swarm intelligence. All right. So collective intelligence has been defined as intelligence which involves group rather than individual mental effort. Uh, in contrast to overall performance, the term collective intelligence describes the increase in effectiveness that team members gain by working together. For example, a team of poor performers could display high collective intelligence if they perform better than they could when they were on their own. Uh, while a team of high performers may display low collective intelligence if they don't gain much by working together. Thus, how team members combine their cognitive resources may be just as or even more important to the emergence of collective intelligence than their cognitive resources themselves. Communication is an important component of teamwork that can facilitate the sharing, combination, and organization of individual knowledge, ideas, and perspectives. Within industrial organizational psychology, it's often examined within the framework of the input process output model. This model conceptualizes how team processes, such as communication, mediate the relationship between inputs and team outputs. For example, researchers may examine how inputs, such as the personalities of team members, the size of the team, or the nature of the task, relate to the quality of team communication, and how the quality of communication relates to team performance, collective intelligence, or team satisfaction. Data on communication or other team processes may summarize team interactions at the end of the study or be sampled at a few points throughout through the use of self-report methods or observation. Studies using these methods have provided important insights into the role communication plays in collective intelligence and team performance. For example, communication is positively related to team performance. Communication is more important for tax, tasks that are complex and interdependent. And information elaboration is more important than information or knowledge sharing. However, shortcomings of these methods are that they're incapable of capturing important dynamics of a team's communication processes over time, and how these dynamics relate to both input and output variables. During a conversation, each individual speaking behaviors both shape and react to the behavior of other individuals. For example, this is a visualization of a real conversation between three speakers, with each colored bar representing the timing and duration of their speaking turns. This coordinated process is shaped by both implicit rules of conversational turn taking, as well as individual variation in speaking behaviors. For example, dominance level has been found to correlate with total speaking time and likelihood of interruption. And in mixed sex pairs, men talk more than women regardless of relative dominance. Thus, team members' communication behaviors may combine in complex ways to shape the structure of interactions between them, which can then shape how their contributions are converted to team outputs. Indeed, there's evidence that communication dynamics play an important role in team performance and collective intelligence. For example, total speaking time may be connected to leadership. Uh, and centralization of speaking around a dominant team member uh, may negatively impact skill utilization of other team members. Um, and similarly, unequal speaking time can negatively impact uh, team performance outcomes. So studying uh, the structure of communication processes, even with no or minimal content, has the potential to shed light on important interaction mechanisms underlying the emergence of collective intelligence. In this regard, studies of swarm intelligence can provide inspiration for this approach. The term swarm intelligence is typically reserved for intelligent group behaviors that emerge in a self-organized manner. It is often used to describe intelligent feats performed by relatively simple individuals, such as social insects. Honeybee nest site selection is one of the best studied animal models for collective decision making that emphasizes the key role of communication between group members. Swarms of honeybees are capable of consistently choosing the best nest site out of an option, a set of options, and this process is facilitated through interactions between group members. For example, the waggle dance shares information about potential nest sites. Dance intensity correlates with site quality, and this information impacts recruitment, um, where more individuals are recruited to higher quality sites. And then hive transfer is triggered when a quorum is reached of scouts um, at one particular site. 
So significant progress has been made in understanding examples of storm intelligence, such as honeybee nest site selection, by combining theoretical models with detailed empirical studies. For example, agent-based models are used to connect local interaction rules to group level properties. This graph shows the result of a model connecting individual dancing behaviors to the number of scouts that arrive at a given nest site. Furthermore, empirical studies can be used to test whether real behaviors align with models. For example, by continuously tracking dancing behavior within the hive. Um, and the process of group consensus decision-making can be studied in detail over time. And the outcomes of empirical studies can be compared to theoretical predictions and used to improve future model development. In addition, validated models can be used to examine how variation in model parameters impact outcomes, such as the trade-off trade -off between speed and accuracy, or whether the decision will end in deadlock. These studies can provide a mechanistic understanding of how these complex collective behaviors enable the, um, and enable the prediction of specific dynamics and outcomes. This approach uh, is not only reserved for animal studies. Uh, for example, this research method has been applied to the study of human crowd behavior. Individual-based social force models have been used to model and predict crowd dynamics. Real-world behavior, such as lane formation, can be measured and analyzed and linked back to models. And the progression of navigational decision-making can even be studied over time through the continuous tracking of individual movements. While this approach has been successfully applied to crowd behavior, its application to collective intelligence is more difficult due to the need to link vocal interactions to the progression of group outcomes over time. Um, luckily, this problem fails, falls well within my research area. My research focuses on the connection between communication and collective behavior in species ranging from frogs to chimpanzees. Notably, I've developed and used a continuous tracking technology to study the connection between communication and the collective movement behavior and decision-making of goats and baboons. For example, I've studied how lost calls regulate group cohesion in free-ranging goats, as well as the role contact calls play in the coordination of departure in wild baboons. And I'm now applying my unique background and skill set towards the study of collective intelligence in human teams. Particularly, I recently wrote a re review paper on how advances in this area can be made by studying this topic from the perspective of storm intelligence. My work is examining the following research questions through the use of both empirical studies and theoretical models. Um, how do individual traits impact speaking patterns? How does a team's trait composition shape its communication dynamics? And how do communication dynamics shape team outcomes? By understanding how individual traits and speaking behaviors combine to shape conversation dynamics and how properties of these dynamics impact the combination of knowledge, ideas, and perspectives, we can gain a detailed understanding of the scaffolding upon which collective intelligence is built. And for the remainder of this talk, I'm going to briefly describe our recent progress on uh, this third area. So I'm collaborating with a multidisciplinary team of researchers in the area of psychological sciences, biological sciences, and engineering, with many of our projects centered on the topic of engineering design. Our team is developing and using remote sensing technology to continuously measure verbal and nonverbal behaviors throughout the teamwork process through the use of observational studies of real world teams and experiments in the lab. Unfortunately, right now is not the best time to be studying in-person social interactions. Um, we're currently in the process of shifting our studies towards the study of virtual teams. And so I'm actually only going to be presenting preliminary data since uh, the experiments we had begun um, earlier in the semester um, have been cut off unexpectedly. So I'm going to provide an overview of one of the tasks that we're using and some preliminary results from this task. So it involves a simple online design tool that also has an objective performance measure. And the goal is to design a solution to maximize performance as specified by the researchers. It involves an individual brainstorming phase where individuals come up with their own solutions to the challenge on their own. And then a subsequent team decision-making phase where the individuals come together and work together as a team um, to come up with a, a team solution to the problem. Um, in addition to these team um, trials, we also ran solitary trials where individuals had an initial brainstorming phase and then they had a longer period um, equivalent to the team phase where they could elaborate upon their initial solution. Um, we're currently conducting studies with um, three-person teams and we have plans to elaborate um, and extend group size in the future. So the value of our task 
is that we can use it to study how conversation facilitates the conversion of individual inputs to team solutions by extracting data on both the performance and design of these solutions. And so as individuals are designing them, they do not have access to performance information. So they're not allowed to test them uh, through the design process. So we're able to study processes of influence um, between team members during this process. We're first testing whether our study facilitates the emergence of collective intelligence. So do teams perform better than individuals on this task? Uh, we found that in the solitary trials, there was no difference um, in the median va values of performance between the initial design phase and the final design phase. When we look at the team trials, we see um, a significant increase in performance between the initial individual phase and then the subsequent um, team design phase. So during the period when the individuals could come together and um, work on their solution together. So um, this box plot here is representing the median um, solution uh, performance value for um, each team. And then this is showing the maximum um, performance value for um, each team um, during the individual phase. Um, and we see that for when we are looking at the best solution to this challenge, the median team outcome was not better um, than um, in the team phase than in the individual phase, though we did see a reduction in variance. Um, this may suggest that um, team members are towards the, um, their peak of their performance on this particular task, and we're currently working on creating more complex design challenges to present to these teams. And if we look in detail at um, how these designs changed over time, so this is the performance of the, each team's best individual in the, the initial phase compared to their, uh, the team's uh, performance in the team phase. We see that individuals that did not perform well during the initial phase had a very large um, increase in performance during the team phase, while well, individuals that uh, performed well during the um, initial phase, well, teams that had those individuals um, did not perform too differently during the team phase. And so our goal is to gain insight into how teams' interactions uh, relate to the patterns of collective intelligence that they display. Um, so just one example of how we can do this once we collect more data is that we can examine the um, difference between each individual's design in their initial solutions to the design of the team solutions. So if we compare the distance between um, the design of, for instance, the top speaker, so the individual who spoke the most, and um, the design of the individual who had the best solution, we can try to see which of these um, patterns may um, play a more important role in um, who gains more influence over um, the final team solution. So if points fall um, during, in this uh, section, it indicates that um, individuals with the best solution had more influence over decision making. But if they fall in this area, uh, individuals that were speaking more had more influence. And this is just where our initial points fell. Um, we had a lot of points on um, this line, which indicates that um, the final team solution um, best matched um, the, uh, the solution of the team member that was both the top speaker and had the best solution. So if we look at speaking behaviors by their relative team solution, we see that individuals that had the best initial solution had a tendency to speak more than expected, while that was not seen for individuals that had the worst solution. Uh, and while it may be um, good that individuals with good solutions are talking more, we do not always see um, these patterns. For instance, in studies of observational, um, observational studies of teamwork that we've conducted previously, we found that native um, English speakers spoke significantly more than non-native speakers. And these dynamics can be um, uh, counterproductive for uh, collective intelligence. So um, uh, in summary, I'm studying how individual traits in, uh, impact speaking patterns, how a team's trait composition shapes its communication dynamics, and how communication dynamics impact team outcomes. And the value of our approach is that we can understand and predict um, group dynamics, leadership emergence, collective intelligence, and performance with the aim of targeted interven interventions to improve teamwork. And my long-term research goals are to better understand and engineer the social dynamics of successfully functioning groups, do basic research on non-human and human collective behaviors, 
an application towards improving the functioning of human groups, teams, and societies. Thank you.